Chapter 33 The Animal Body Basic Form and Function 33.1 Animal Form and Function By the end of this section, you will be able to do the following. Describe the various types of body plans that occur in animals. Describe limits on animal size and shape. Relate bioenergetics to body size, levels of activity, and the environment animals vary in form and function. From a sponge to a worm to a goat, an organism has a distinct body plan that limits its size and shape. Animals' bodies are also designed to interact with their environments, whether in the deep sea, a rainforest canopy, or the desert. Therefore, a large amount of information about the structure of an organism's body, anatomy, and the function of its cells, tissues and organs, physiology, can be learned by studying that organism's environment. Figure 33.1 An arctic fox is a complex animal, well adapted to its environment. It changes coat color with the seasons, and has longer fur in winter to trap heat. Credit. Modification of work by Keith Morehouse, USFWS. Introduction The Arctic fox is an example of a complex animal that has adapted to its environment and illustrates the relationships between an animal's form and function. The structures of animals consist of primary tissues that make up more complex organs and organ systems. Homeostasis allows an animal to maintain a balance between its internal and external environments. Chapter Outline 33.1 Animal Form and Function 33.2 Animal Primary Tissues 33.3 Homeostasis Body Plans Figure 33.2 Animals Exhibit Different Types of Body Symmetry The sponge is asymmetrical, the sea anemone has radial symmetry, and the goat has bilateral symmetry. Animal body plans follow set patterns related to symmetry. They are asymmetrical, radial, or bilateral in form as illustrated in figure 33.2. Asymmetrical animals are animals with no pattern or symmetry. An example of an asymmetrical animal is a sponge. Radial symmetry, as illustrated in figure 33.2, describes when an animal has an up and down orientation. Any plane cut along its longitudinal axis through the organism produces equal halves but not a definite right or left side. This plan is found mostly in aquatic animals, especially organisms that attach themselves to a base, like a rock or a boat, and extract their food from the surrounding water as it flows around the organism. Bilateral symmetry is illustrated in the same figure by a goat. The goat also has an upper and lower component to it, but a plane cut from front to back separates the animal into definite right and left sides. Additional terms used when describing positions in the body are anterior, front, posterior, rear, dorsal, toward the back, and ventral, toward the stomach. Bilateral symmetry is found in both land-based and aquatic animals. It enables a high level of mobility. Limits on animal size and shape Animals with bilateral symmetry that live in water tend to have a fusiform shape. This is a tubular-shaped body that is tapered at both ends. This shape decreases the drag on the body as it moves through water and allows the animal to swim at high speeds. Table 33.1 lists the maximum speed of various animals. Certain types of sharks can swim at 50 km per hour and some dolphins at 32 to 40 km per hour. Land animals frequently travel faster, although the tortoise and snail are significantly slower than cheetahs. Another difference in the adaptations of aquatic and land-dwelling organisms is that aquatic organisms are constrained in shape by the forces of drag in the water since water has higher viscosity than air. On the other hand, land-dwelling organisms are constrained mainly by gravity, and drag is relatively unimportant. For example, most adaptations in birds are for gravity not for drag. Maximum speed of assorted land and marine animals Animal speed, KMH, speed. MPH, cheetah 113 70 quarter horse 77 48 fox 68 42 table 33.1922 chapter 33. The animal body. Basic form and function access for free at openstax.org. Animal speed, KMH, speed, MPH, shortfin mako shark 50 31 domestic house cat 48 30 human 45 28 dolphin 3 2 4 0 2 0 2 5 mouse 13 8 snail 0 0.050 0 0.03 table 33.1 most animals have an exoskeleton, including insects, spiders, scorpions, horseshoe crabs, centipedes, and crustaceans. Scientists estimate that, of insects alone, there are over 30 million species on our planet. The exoskeleton is a hard covering or shell that provides benefits to the animal, 
such as protection against damage from predators and from water loss, for land animals, it also provides for the attachments of mussels. As the tough and resistant outer cover of an arthropod, the exoskeleton may be constructed of a tough polymer such as chitin and is often biomineralized with materials such as calcium carbonate. This is fused to the animal's epidermis. Ingrowths of the exoskeleton, called apodemes, function as attachment sites for muscles, similar to tendons in more advanced animals. Figure 33.3. In order to grow, the animal must first synthesize a new exoskeleton underneath the old one and then shed or molt the original covering. This limits the animal's ability to grow continually, and may limit the individual's ability to mature if molting does not occur at the proper time. The thickness of the exoskeleton must be increased significantly to accommodate any increase in weight. It is estimated that a doubling of body size increases body weight by a factor of 8. The increasing thickness of the chitin necessary to support this weight limits most animals with an exoskeleton to a relatively small size. The same principles apply to endoskeletons, but they are more efficient because muscles are attached on the outside, making it easier to compensate for increased mass. Figure 33.3 apodemes are ingrowths on arthropod exoskeletons to which muscles attach. The apodemes on this crab leg are located above and below the fulcrum of the claw. Contraction of muscles attached to the apodemes pulls the claw closed. An animal with an endoskeleton has its size determined by the amount of skeletal system it needs in order to support the other tissues and the amount of muscle it needs for movement. As the body size increases, both bone and muscle mass increase. The speed achievable by the animal is a balance between its overall size and the bone and muscle that provide support and movement. Limiting effects of diffusion on size and development The exchange of nutrients and wastes between a cell and its watery environment occurs through the process of diffusion. All living cells are bathed in liquid, whether they are in a single-celled organism or a multicellular one. Diffusion is effective over a specific distance and limits the size that an individual cell can attain. If a cell is a single-celled microorganism, such as an 33.1, animal form and function 923 amoeba, it can satisfy all of its nutrient and waste needs through diffusion. If the cell is too large, then diffusion is ineffective and the center of the cell does not receive adequate nutrients nor is it able to effectively dispel its waste. An important concept in understanding how efficient diffusion is as a means of transport is the surface-to-volume ratio. Recall that any three-dimensional object has a surface area and volume. The ratio of these two quantities is the surface-to-volume ratio. Consider a cell shaped like a perfect sphere. It has a surface area of 4 pi r2, and a volume of, 4 thirds, pi r3. The surface to volume ratio of a sphere is 3, r. As the cell gets bigger, its surface to volume ratio decreases, making diffusion less efficient. The larger the size of the sphere, or animal, the less surface area for diffusion it possesses. The solution to producing larger organisms is for them to become multicellular. Specialization occurs in complex organisms, allowing cells to become more efficient at doing fewer tasks. For example, circulatory systems bring nutrients and remove waste, while respiratory systems provide oxygen for the cells and remove carbon dioxide from them. Other organ systems have developed further specialization of cells and tissues and efficiently control body functions. Moreover, surface-to-volume ratio applies to other areas of animal development such as the relationship between muscle mass and cross-sectional surface area in supporting skeletons, and in the relationship between muscle mass and the generation and dissipation of heat. Link to learning visit this interactive site, http colon slash slash openstacks.org slash l slash nanoscopy closing parenthesis to see an entire animal, a zebrafish embryo, at the cellular and subcellular level. Use the zoom and navigation functions for a virtual nanoscopy exploration. Animal bioenergetics All animals must obtain their energy from food they ingest or absorb. These nutrients are converted to adenosine triphosphate, ATP, for short-term storage and use by all cells. Some animals store energy for slightly longer times as glycogen, and others store energy for much longer times in the form of triglycerides housed in specialized adipose tissues. No energy system is 100% efficient, and an animal's metabolism produces waste energy in the form of heat. If an animal can conserve that heat and maintain a relatively constant body temperature, it is classified as a warm-blooded animal and called an endotherm. 
The insulation used to conserve the body heat comes in the forms of fur, fat, or feathers. The absence of insulation in ectothermic animals increases their dependence on the environment for body heat. The amount of energy expended by an animal over a specific time is called its metabolic rate. The rate is measured variously in joules, calories, or kilocalories, 1000 calories. Carbohydrates and proteins contain about 4.5 to 5 kilocalories per gram, and fat contains about 9 kilocalories per gram. Metabolic rate is estimated as the basal metabolic rate, BMR, in endothermic animals at rest and as the standard metabolic rate, SMR, in ectotherms. Human males have a BMR of 1600 to 1800 kilocalories per day, and human females have a BMR of 1300 to 1500 kilocalories per day. Even with insulation, endothermal animals require extensive amounts of energy to maintain a constant body temperature. An ectotherm such as an alligator has an SMR of 60 kilocalories per day. Energy requirements related to body size Smaller endothermic animals have a greater surface area for their mass than larger ones, figure 33.4. Therefore, smaller animals lose heat at a faster rate than larger animals and require more energy to maintain a constant internal temperature. This results in a smaller endothermic animal having a higher BMR, per body weight, than a larger endothermic animal. Figure 33.4 The mouse has a much higher metabolic rate than the elephant. Credit, Mouse. Modification of work by Magnus Kiergaard. 924 Chapter 33. The Animal Body. Basic form and function access for free at OpenStacks.org. Credit, Elephant. Modification of work by The Lizard Queen. Flicker. Energy requirements related to levels of activity The more active an animal is, the more energy is needed to maintain that activity, and the higher its BMR or SMR. The average daily rate of energy consumption is about 2 to 4 times an animal's BMR or SMR. Humans are more sedentary than most animals and have an average daily rate of only 1.5 times the BMR. The diet of an endothermic animal is determined by its BMR. For example, the type of grasses, leaves, or shrubs that an herbivore eats affects the number of calories that it takes in. The relative caloric content of herbivore foods, in descending order, is tall grasses greater than legumes greater than short grasses greater than forbs, any broadleaved plant, not a grass, greater than subshrubs greater than annuals, biennials. Energy requirements related to environment animals adapt to extremes of temperature or food availability through torpor. Torpor is a process that leads to a decrease in activity and metabolism and allows animals to f survive adverse conditions. Torpor can be used by animals for long periods, such as entering a state of hibernation during the winter months, in which case it enables them to maintain a reduced body temperature. During hibernation, ground squirrels can achieve an abdominal temperature of 0 degrees Celsius, 32 degrees Fahrenheit, while a bear's internal temperature is maintained higher at about 37 degrees Celsius, 99 degrees Fahrenheit. If torpor occurs during the summer months with high temperatures and little water, it is called estivation. Some desert animals use this to survive the harshest months of the year. Torpor can occur on a daily basis. This is seen in bats and hummingbirds. While endothermy is limited in smaller animals by surface to volume ratio, some organisms can be smaller and still be endotherms because they employ daily torpor during the part of the day that is coldest. This allows them to conserve energy during the colder parts of the day, when they consume more energy to maintain their body temperature. Animal body planes and cavities A standing vertebrate animal can be divided by several planes. A sagittal plane divides the body into right and left portions. A mid-sagittal plane divides the body exactly in the middle, making two equal right and left halves. A frontal plane, also called a coronal plane, separates the front from the back. A transverse plane, or, horizontal plane, divides the animal into upper and lower portions. This is sometimes called a cross-section, and, if the transverse cut is at an angle, it is called an oblique plane. Figure 33.5 illustrates these planes on a goat, a four-legged animal, and a human being. Figure 33.5 shown are the planes of a quadrupedal goat and a bipedal human. The mid-sagittal plane divides the body exactly in half, into right and left portions. The frontal plane divides the front and back, and the transverse plane divides the body into upper and lower portions. 
Vertebrate animals have a number of defined body cavities, as illustrated in figure 33.6. Two of these are major cavities that contain smaller cavities within them. The dorsal cavity contains the cranial and the vertebral, or spinal, cavities. The ventral cavity contains the thoracic cavity, which in turn contains the pleural cavity around the lungs and the pericardial cavity, which 33.1, animal form and function 925 surrounds the heart. The ventral cavity also contains the abdominopelvic cavity, which can be separated into the abdominal and the pelvic cavities. Figure 33.6 Vertebrate animals have two major body cavities. The dorsal cavity contains the cranial and the spinal cavity. The ventral cavity contains the thoracic cavity and the abdominopelvic cavity. The thoracic cavity is separated from the abdominopelvic cavity by the diaphragm. The abdominopelvic cavity is separated into the abdominal cavity and the pelvic cavity by an imaginary line parallel to the pelvis bones. Credit. Modification of work by NCI, Career Connection Physical Anthropologist. Physical anthropologists study the adaption, variability, and evolution of human beings, plus their living and fossil relatives. They can work in a variety of settings, although most will have an academic appointment at a university, usually in an anthropology department or a biology, genetics, or zoology department. Non-academic positions are available in the automotive and aerospace industries where the focus is on human size, shape, and anatomy. Research by these professionals might range from studies of how the human body reacts to car crashes to exploring how to make seats more comfortable. Other non-academic positions can be obtained in museums of natural history, anthropology, archaeology, or science and technology. These positions involve educating students from grade school through graduate school. Physical anthropologists serve as education coordinators, collection managers, writers for museum publications, and as administrators. Zoos employ these professionals, especially if they have an expertise in primate biology. They work in collection management and captive breeding programs for endangered species. Forensic science utilizes physical anthropology expertise in identifying human and animal remains assisting in determining the cause of death, and for expert testimony in trials. 926 Chapter 33, The Animal Body. Basic Form and Function Access for free at OpenStax.org.